Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon. How are you guys? Good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bodo. I don't know what is wrong with my cam. There is some problem. Hmm. It's not your cam camera has some problem. Maybe it's some issue in the connectivity. It's okay. We'll see what or how can we fix that. Akmal, hold on. Let's the participant join. Then we will be taking one time attendance. So let them join.
Uh, well, guys, it's 5.35. <clears throat> now we are going to start our new lesson. And uh, that is about element nine. Uh, till yesterday, if there is any question, please ask me. Your video lectures are uh, already, I mean, in line. Those would be uploaded, inshallah, soon. So in case if there would be, uh, once you watch the recorded session, in case if there is still if there is any question you can ask me okay so now we are going to discuss our element nine that is the work equipment what we are going to discuss basically in the work equipment we are going to discuss about the general work equipment which we are using means general work equipment means general tools what are those sometimes we are having power tools sometimes we are having non-powered tools but we use the tools in you, uh, I mean, by our hands. So what are those? We will see what are the learning objectives today. We, at the end of this element, you will be able to describe the general requirements for work equipment, that what work requirements, we uh, work equipments we are having, what are their general requirements. We will be able to explain the hazards and controls for hand tools and portable power tools. If we are having hand tools, if we are having portable power tools, what are those? What different kind of tools we are using? What are their hazards and what are their controls? Then we will be describing the, or we will be able to describe the main mechanical and non-mechanical hazards of machinery. We are using different machineries, including hand tools, power tools. For the uh, related to those machineries, we are having mechanical hazards as well as non-mechanical hazards. We will see what are mechanical and what are non-mechanical hazards. Then we will be able to explain the main control measures for reducing risk from machinery hazard. If we talk about machinery hazard, we are having different mechanical as well as non-mechanical hazard. So we will see what are those different hazards and how we are going to get control over them. How can we reduce the risk while using different machines? So starting the first topic, that is our element, uh, sorry, our module one, 9.1 general requirements for work equipment. What are the general requirements for work equipment? First of all, we should know what different type of work equipment we are having on our job site. We are having simple hand tools. We are having handheld power tools. If we start, uh, if I start giving the example of simple hand tools like hammer, chisel, screwdriver, if we talk about handheld power tools like portable electrical dr drills, circular saw, if we talk about the single machine like photocopier, bench mounted abrasive wheel, lathe machine uh, compactor, Regarding a mobile work equipment, we are having tractor or mobile cranes, okay, uh, like uh, machine assemblies, for example, uh, when we are having different machines, functions are connected with each other and they are assembled to give us one output. So these are different examples of work equipment. Whenever we are having the work equipment, it is the requirement uh, from the employers that employers are those who have to provide the work equipment. And when the employer have to provide the work equipment, it is very important that work equipment should be carefully selected to ensure that it is appropriate for the task for its intended purpose. If we need screwdriver, we should be having screwdriver. Second, environment and condition where we are going to use the, those tools. For example, in case if we are having a warehouse, inside the warehouse, we should be having electrical uh, or battery operated forklift or battery operated tools. We should not be having any diesel or in, uh, petrol driven or any kind of LPG operated or driven tools or equipment like for example, forklift. 
employers in the uk and europe have to ensure that any equipment they purchase for the work use should be having a ce mark what is ce mark we will see it in our next slide and it should be complying with the european standard what are these let us see ce mark you would have seen this kind of mark on your uh, mobile phones perhaps on your laptop chargers all the equipment which you are purchasing you would be having these this kind of mark ce okay this ce mark is basically conformity european mark means this appliance is as per european standards okay and european they are having one machinery directive this is the number of that machinery directive and it says that manufacturer are required to meet the essential health and safety requirements manufacturer are required okay means whatever the tools they are manufacturing it should be safe and helpful for the users for us then manufacturer are required to create a technical file a technical file is basically a set of document that describes a product and can prove that the product was designed in accordance with the requirement of a quality management system okay basically technical file is all about quality management system uh, about the quality of that uh, product fix a conformity european or ce mark as it is over here then next is provide a written declaration of conformity that yes it is as per our standards provide a written information on hazards risks safe use and maintenance of equipment that whenever as as uh, as an end user you can know the hazard risk safe use and even you should know about the maintenance of the equipment next is it is implemented in uk and uh, there is something which you call uh, regulation that is supply of machinery that is safety regulation 2008 it is mentioned over there in this standard now whenever we are having any kind of machine any kind of tool we are providing it as per the european conformity we must make sure that we have to prevent access to the dangerous dangerous part of the machinery as a manufacturer what i have to do i have to prevent your access to the dangerous part of the machinery for example if i am making an ac or a fan the fan should be guarding okay the fan the fan should be guarded in a way that kids at our home kids in our home for example should not be able to touch the blades of the fan this is an easy example okay in the same way in industry we are having different chains belts drives pulleys are there so it is the job of the manufacturer or our employer to prevent the access to the dangerous part, dangerous part of the machinery access to dangerous part should be prevented or movement of dangerous parts should be stopped for that purpose we are using fixed guards we are using other guards and protection devices okay other guards like interlockable guards like sensors are there okay then protection appliances are there which are protecting us from being uh, touching the moving moving part or the you can say uh, mechanical parts of the machine information instruction training and supervision should be provided so that the uh, the access to the machine dangerous part of the machinery should be practically stopped it should be prevent should be prevented practically next uh, what we are doing we are basically restricting the use restricting the use of what of the person who is going to operate that what does that mean the user is restricted to train and competent operator for the equipment that is highly specialized and has a range of hazard in case if 
there is any equipment which needs some kind of specialized knowledge or if there is any equipment which is having a range of hazard then the user should be trained properly okay he should be certified properly maintenance of work equipment restricted to trained and competent person is required whenever we are going to maintain any kind of work equipment okay whenever we are going to uh, you can say inspect it maintain it we are, we, we are going to open it because whenever we are going for the maintenance usually we are opening the equipments we are removing the guard so only the fixed uh, oh, sorry only the trained person or certified persons are those who should be maintaining those equipment next is if we talk about information instruction and training it should be provided for work equipment users for example low risk equipment uh, in case if we are having any kind of equipment which is having low risk okay only the instructions are required that is enough but in case if we are having high risk equipment then a proper formal training is required and effectiveness should be checked and monitored continuously or regularly okay then the next is managers should be given some kind of information instruction training and supervision okay because they are the one who has to manage about the equipment users next is maintenance staff maintenance staff separately should we should be having a separate maintenance staff why because we want to minimize the risk and maintenance staff is the one who understand the maintenance requirement okay and they know they are trained guys they are they know how to maintain it safely because they know what the what are the internal parts how they can have some kind of injury so they know how to uh, how to open it how to maintain the equipment next is a user users of the uh, work equipment should if i am the operator of the work equipment what i have to i should only operate equipment for which i am authorized to use if i am authorized to use for one model of crane even i am not going to use the other model of crane okay even model to model equipment are having different controls so that is why it is very important that for all the high risk activities or all the tools equipments which are being operated or which are having high risks they should be have they should be operated by certified or trained operators uh, as a user i should operate equipment in accordance with instruction and training whatever the instructions or the trainings i had been given i should operate the equipment only as per instructions or training i should only use the equipment for its intended purpose for example i should not be using forklifts or i should not be using uh, yes forklift i should not use a forklift to lift the people okay until or unless proper attachment if is not given over there and uh, carry out safety checks before using equipment usually we are having routine or daily inspection checklists we are uh, we are basically following those inspection checklist to identify if there is any defect or fault i should not use equipment if it is unsafe usually we are having different tags if the forklift if any tool is not operated or i cannot operate it it is unsafe to operate what i am going to you what what i am going to do we are having tags over there and i am going to tag the equipment that it is not safe do not operate it reports defect immediately uh, putting the tag is not enough of course i have to report the defect sometime you know the defect you can report it sometime you don't know the defect then in that scenario you can at least report that my machine got a fault so maintenance staff or uh, technicians are required to fix the issue they they come they know how to fix it then not use equipment under the influence of drugs or alcohol i don't have to use the equipment under the influence of drug or alcohol this is very common thing 
and uh, when we were having uh, when we were watching the video of forklift in that video we have seen the last accident was because of drugs or alcohol keep equipment clean and maintained in safe working order this is my job to keep the equipment clean and maintain because i am the user of the equipment what are the maintenance requirement work equipment should be maintained in a safe working condition according to the re relevant legal standard and manufacturer recommendation whatever the work equipment you are going to use for that purpose we are having different kind of maintenance like one of them is planned preventive maintenance you commonly we call it ppm what is that that is a kind of maintenance which is scheduled at regular interval for example if you are driving your vehicle up to 5000 kilometers after 5000 kilometers you must need to change your you must change the engine of engine oil of uh, your car next is condition based maintenance condition based maintenance is you are basically following the routine inspection and during the inspection you identified that there is something which needs to be changed for example vehicle brake pads are required to be changed next is a breakdown maintenance in the breakdown maintenance that that kind of maintenance is when there is some kind of repair comes for example uh, during the operation of the machine if the machine gets fault okay and in that scenario or during any any incident or unwanted um, event if occur then we are going for the maintenance that is what we call breakdown maintenance so basically we are having three different kind of maintenance one is planned preventive maintenance one is condition based maintenance one is breakdown maintenance okay uh, there is a group exercise and i want everyone to participate in this group exercise by mentioning your uh, what you call it uh, your ideas or your uh, answers in the chat group exercise says maintenance is often seen as a high risk activity if we see the plant uh, plant preventive maintenance condition based maintenance or breakdown maintenance whatever we see we are having different kind of maintenance these are seen as high risk activity why question is what is that about maintenance uh, sorry what is that about maintenance work which increases the risk list out the factors or list out all those points which are increasing the risk whenever we are going for some kind of maintenance come on guys come to the chat i want everyone to participate in that or if someone wants to come on the mic he can use the mic as well anyone you are going for the maintenance maintenance uh, of your, yes please sharp edges uh, flammable material sharp edges are there of the machine flammable material we will be using yes very nice pezan yes please sir uh, just uh, if it is high risk job then we will we will do the we will follow the safe procedure of working that is complete shutdown or we will follow the loto process log out tag out process right okay so that, what uh, basically the question uh, yeah we right okay fine uh, see the question is uh, you you are telling us about the precautions we will be taking the question is that why it is considered as high risk activity just like mr umar has told us that one of the reason he told us that uh, it we will be for the maintenance we are using chemicals which are highly flammable and uh, when we are opening the machine we may have some kind of sharp edge sharp parts are there which can uh, give us some kind of cuts on our hands 
Yes, come on. Come on, guys. If something comes in your mind, who who was or maintenance in confined spaces? Very nice, Adil. Very nice. Because sometimes when we are opening the machines in big big machines, once you open them, confined spaces are there, and you get in those confined spaces to maintain the machine. Yes. Who who was involved or who have done? or attended any kind of what you call it shutdowns anyone among us if he yes very nice mr Ramesh, shutdowns so, shutdown in shutdown what do we do yes example in the shutdown we can take as a partially plant is shutdown now there uh -huh. is some level of gas is there, then they will block the valve. So other uh -huh. area normally, just an example I am telling, they used to do Can any cutting, we are welding and all any extension, any new uh, type of T giants, L giants, plunge giants connection used to happen. Right. And right. that what is the one danger? Part of the, yeah. part of the shutdown I am telling. Yeah, yeah, please. We need to be very careful on that uh, between the closed wall, where the uh, valve is closed, there may be a bypass of gases. We I cannot say 100% okay. it is closed. There is a possibility of gases when we are doing the hot work, connecting to that the fire triangle, it can be a big fire can happen. The, because this is the one of right. the major hazard during the maintenance, number one. Right. Right. Maintenance is so, in maintenance in live electricity. Yeah, yes. maybe we will go for the maintenance and we would be having some kind of live parts of the machines. Very nice, Adam. And if we can say that who uh, was involved, who was involved in the in the shutdowns? If someone was involved in the shutdowns, then he know he would know about this that because in the shutdown what do we do we maintain the plant right we are op we are almost opening the whole plant we are doing all the things the whole plant is being serviced just like your engine is going to be serviced sir can we say the proper so, isolation if we will not isolate there will be a chance of again another danger uh, during the shutdown all the uh, fire yeah, reduction systems are uh, shut off Okay, okay, fine. So all the sensors are shut off and then we, we go for the maintenance so we cannot know that in case if there is some yeah, kind of fire. Very nice. Fezan, uh, please. Just I was telling that uh, proper isolation. That if we are working... Uh, maybe we, yes, proper isolation is required. Maybe we are having improper isolation. Then it is a hazard. Very nice. Adil, you were, uh, you were about to say something. maintenance at top building where is not proper access very nice proper access would not be there yes in the same way inside the machine inside the confined spaces which we have been created there could be some areas where work at height could be considered right so these are some of the hazards let us see that what further hazards we we can have see during the maintenance staff is at greater risk why? Because first thing, guards and enclosures are removed. You are removing the guards. You are in removing the enclosures. Okay, now you are directly getting exposed with the moving parts of the machine. One. Second, safety devices removed or disabled. Just like uh, Mr. Ramesh has mentioned that we are removing any kind of all the fire detectors are disabled then equipment partially or completely dismantled. Yes, we are dismantling it, okay? And of course, we need to take care about those, those things that if we are partially dismantling it, where we are going to store that, how we are going to store that, and when we are uh, dismantling it, what about the manual handling? Then power sources are exposed openly, electrical, 
terminologies as adil mentioned i guess or uh, i guess fezan uh, mentioned then stored power release for example compressed spring in case if we are having some kind of moving parts of the machine uh, or uh, some kind of uh, parts which are basically storing some kind of energy for example springs are there if it is compressed uh, compressed or pulled spring then it can be released accidentally then access may be awkward you might not be able to move to get in freely okay or you might not be able to get outside freely then manual handling of heavy parts we already agreed additional hazard for example power tool okay and pressure to get the equipment running quickly other than this as mr umar has mentioned that we are dealing sometime with the flammable material okay which because we are using some kind of cleaners or solvents which are flammable so during that because already the uh, sensors are disabled so fire could be there other than that if we are using some kind of solvents of course inhalation hazards are there okay and uh, what other reason uh, yeah uh, sharp edges when we are removing the uh, machine or when we are you can say equip, uh, when we are uh, dismantling the machine basically at that time sometimes we are having sharp edges of the machine so these are the reasons and because of these reasons we are having maintenance or we do consider that maintenance is a high risk activity moving next what are the precautions we need to take during maintenance work first of all we should be having competent staff Usually, you would have seen that for all kind of shutdown, whenever there is an advertisement, they all the time used to ask that the person would be hired if he would have done at least one shutdown before. Why? Because they want to hire competent staff. Then the next is a power sources isolated or lock off or tagged out properly. Isolation should be there so that because we are working on some parts of the plants, let's say. okay in those areas the remaining parts which on which we are not working they might be in the running position and if those parts are in the running position then it means that our machine on which we are working on it should be isolated from the rest of the plant otherwise the output of the other side may become the input of our machine and that would be hazardous for us the next is stored power must be released or secured uh because we are having live parts okay so we must cover the live parts with insulating material maybe the power is stored in the batteries and if we will be having cover live uh, if we will be having live parts we must cover them we also need to use the additional pp in case if required next is if dangerous moving parts are accessed in case if we are having if you are going to go for some kind of mechanical parts of the machine for example fans or uh, belts or drives motors are there they we must ma make sure that these parts should be running at very slow speed okay so that we should be having proper control as well as in case of an emergency we can get outside next a fit purpose made maintenance guards are required so that in case if we are having some moving parts of the machine we can protect ourselves from those moving parts of the machine by putting by putting those uh you can say smaller components over there next is a precaution for safe access what we are going to do we must be having precautions for the safe access Uh, like uh, we can have a log in log out register over there so that everyone who is getting inside who is getting outside we should be having log in log out uh, for all the people so a record would be maintained over there just like uh, at the opening of the confined space we are doing the next is use manual handling aids we must be having manual handling aids so that we can move the heavy parts of the machine from one point to another point like we should be having hoists and usually we are having them next is 
in case if we are going to have control on the equipment or the environmental factor first we will be learning about the controls controls should be well designed and easy to use for the machines so that we can use them easily and we can identify them easily second thing suitably located in easy access of the operator easily identifiable with different color so that we can easily identify them like emergency stop in this scenario in good working order the controls should be in good working order usually we are trying them before we are going to operate the machine just to make sure that in case of an emergency i can use it uh, to stop the machine and it should be complying uh, complying with the re uh, relevant standards that relevant standards should be met with the controls which we are applying over there emergency stop should be there for example buttons or pull cords are there just like kind of chain so that in case of an emergency button should be in my access or uh, some kind of cord is my in my access or chain is in my access that i could i can pull it and i can stop the machine and uh, regarding the equipment equipment should be stable have controls appropriately marked okay have appropriate warning signs for dangerous or uh, you can say to avoid the misuse and we should be having proper lighting okay which we call adequate lighting should be there and those should be suitable It means we should not be having any stroboscopic or flickering effect over there sometimes uh, we are having flickering effect of the light light turns on turns off on off that is not uh, that is not allowed by the way next is, next is uh, our lighting should be environmentally suitable okay for example in the confined space we should be having explosion proof lighting equipment okay next is space should be adequate for all the all the workers and uh, to perform the job and to handle the material so these are basically some of the requirement for work equipment okay and that is the end of our first module in this module what did we discuss we started discussing uh, the introduction of basic uh, or main types of work equipment starting from the simple hand tools up to the machine assemblies then we discussed about the stability in which we uh, sorry suitability in which we discussed about the task and environment and condition okay regarding the suitability we discussed about the legal standards we discussed about different kind of protections from the moving parts of the machinery we discussed about the restricting use that for the user he has uh, user should be restricted in case if he is not trained or uh, if he is trained or not then we discussed about the information instruction and training okay and uh, specifically some uh, precautions were given for the operator after that we discussed dif different kind of maintenance and their requirements we discussed about the planned preventive maintenance condition based maintenance and breakdown maintenance okay after that uh we are having uh, uh, we discussed about the maintenance requirement that uh maintenance is considered as high risk activity why it is considered as high risk activity we discussed and there was a group discussion by the way after that uh, we discussed about the competent staff power source or some other kind of maintenance requirements then we moved to the controls we move to the emergency stop we move to some other precautions regarding the equipment regarding the lighting and the environmental factors so it was our module 1 i hope so everything would have been well understood in case if there is any question please ask me otherwise we will be proceeding to our second module that is hand tools and portable power tools any question guys no sir no okay let us move to our module 2 which is hand tools and portable power tools guys when we talk about the hand tools okay what are our usual common hand, hand tools hammer chisel screw driver x right these are our common hand tools which are in front of you 
what we are going to do we are going to discuss the different hand tools and they are uh, sorry we are going to discuss the hazard of different hand tools and their controls so can you please mention some of the hazard of hand tools sir hand injury cutting or for finger hand and hand injury cutting very nice A wedge can be removed from the head. Come again, please. Yes. If it is a hammer, the wedge can be wooden, which can be removed from the metal okay, body. Yes. Can be separated. Tool will shatter. Yes, 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 yes. Two tools will shatter. Okay. Also. Adil, sorry. Come again, please. Mm, muscle cramps. Cramps. Okay. Yes. During the manual handling. Yes, we are having this. Fracture. motions, yes. Fractures, broken bones, yes. Anyone else? I was thinking about Mr. Adnan and he is joining us. I was thinking because he usually used to mention all the things in the chat. Anyone? Okay, let me let you uh, let me ask you guys one by one. Nawaz Khan, usually you are not speaking up. Are you with me? There is one guy, Akmal. Where is he? He left. Pradeep, Saha, Zeng. Come on, guys. What are the hazards of hand tools? These are, by the way, very common things. I uh, mention in the chat. Mention in the chat. No problem. If someone doesn't want to speak up, mention in the chat. Can I? Speak? Yes, Mr. Vijay. <clears throat> yeah, see some power tools like uh, screwdriver and all. Uh, see if it is not uh, power uh, blocked in the handles and all, it will be it will be a big hazard of uh, power right. access to the power uh, current right. power. Uh, yeah, it will be a big uh, hazard, biggest hazard. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice. But guys, very nice. Keep these tools in mind. What about these tools? Their hazards. Come on. You see ch chisels, if it is fall down, it may be fall down to some other's uh, body and very it nice. can hurt. Yeah. Body parts. Very nice. Yeah, very parts. nice. Very nice. Okay. Cut, finger cut. Someone mentioned finger cut. Yes, these are some of the uh, hazard with the hand tools. Remember, we are not discussing the power tools. We are discussing the hand tools which are non-powered. Tools may shatter. When we talk about shatter, it can slip and can get smashed to someone. Handle may come loose and tool can slip out. Tools may be blunt. <clears throat> When we talk about blunt, it means that may be unsharp and requiring excessive force. Okay, then human error, for example, hit thumb with the hammer. Then misuse, for example, a wrong tool for the wrong job. Do we do this? The wrong tool for the job? Most of the time they use to. Most of the time. What can you give me the example? Okay, sir. Just uh, um... Just I will give the example that uh, we are working with uh, just we are carrying out the electric electrical job. Okay, so it's just uh, right. we have a tool that uh, it requires the hammer or a screwdriver. Okay, or the cutter, right. wire cutter exactly, right. which we use. So if if mm -hmm. we have not carried the hammer, wire so so we okay. can we uh, we have started using the cutter instead of hammer to pin any nail. Commonly, very nice. Very nice. Usually, this is a usual practice. Okay, even ranches are used 
okay we use wrench to uh, hit just like uh, just like hammer yeah, these are the examples of the misuse and usually opening a screw with the knife this is also one of the example and uh, what are the controls controls are tools should be suitable for the task and environment of use for example if the tools are insulated then only we will be using them in the electrical rooms information instructions and training should be given to the operators or to the labor or the workers visual inspection of tool is required in some standard we are uh, we are asking the workers to go for the color coding tools should be color coded okay because color coding means that it is inspected that is the identification then substandard tools repaired or uh, substandard tools repaired uh, in case if we are having some kind of substandard tool which is blunt or which is not inspected or uh, not as per our requirement okay we must uh, not repair them we should be discard we should discard them we should remove them from the service okay and then maintenance of tool is required all the time in some scenario yes we need to have for example if you are using the chisel okay it would be blunt after some time we have to keep it sharp supervision of practices whatever the way people are performing their job they need to be supervised next is uh, now we are going to talk about the power tools okay po power tools which are usually we say portable power tools because they are powered and we keep them we take them from one point to another point forces are greater because they are having additional power which is operating them which is driving them and uh, we are having meaning potential for someone mentioned something okay fine uh, nawaz thank you uh, so sorry uh, over here uh, we are having higher risk because of the portable power tool because forces are greater meaning potential for very severe injury would be in case if the driven energy for example electrical would get out of control or if the machine got slip from our hand then of course it can cause severe injury additional hazards which are present such as electricity petrol noise vibration dust ejected material trip hazards these are some of the additional hazards which we are having because of the portable power tools question is what are the control first of all we must select them carefully for the task and for the environment in which we are going to use them for example we should not be using any kind of equipment which is not flammable oh sorry which is not flame proof we should not use that equipment in the confined space next is instructions should be given for example from manufacturer side we are having instructions as well as we are having some kind of in house rules your local procedures or internal procedures training and information should be given to all the workers and their competency needs to be checked before they have been assigned for any kind of job supervision is all the time required we must inspect the equipment routinely and uh, only authorized person uh, authorized person should be the one who should be repairing for any kind of tool otherwise if we are having a repair tools which is not safe to use we must dispose it off we must remove it from our, from the job site a regular maintenance is required by a competent person and usually the competent staff their list is usually displayed on the notice boards so that in case for example if i am new over there on the job site and i need some kind of maintenance just like which kind of maintenance break down maintenance okay like emergency repair so i can call the concerned person immediately because we are using the tools and usually it happens that tools get break down and we need to call the uh, competent staff for the maintenance yes mr fazan 
just right now, sir, we have discussed the control measures of the portable tools. How we will uh, means uh, if we will work in this like this, then we can mitigate the hazards of the power tools. So just uh, one thing, just I want to ask is this: that in proper positioning, also if we will work, if we will handle the power tools in proper positioning, this uh, this may also come in control. Yeah. Because, if, see, improper position would be a hazard. Yes. Use it in the proper position. Okay. Yes. This is you can say required requirement of the safe practice or precautions, or you can say also control because the person is basically controlling the hazard. Yes. Sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So next is basically that is what you are talking about. So next, it comes a requirement for safe practice. Okay, tools used within design specification, for example, disc speeds, speeds should be matched with the grinders. Okay, guards and also some of the discs are getting expired. Okay, we need to understand that discs are getting expired and we should not be using them after their expiry dates. Okay, guards and safety devices should be in place. PPE must be in use power cables must be controlled proper cable management is required ejected parts must be controlled for example we can make the area secure or we can put some kind of shields over there or otherwise barricade the area control of any noise dust and vibration should be there otherwise and usually by the way we cannot control the noise dust and vibration this is usually we cannot do that. That is why what we have to do, we have to control us. How? By providing proper hearing protection, by providing proper respiratory protection, as well as proper PPE for the vibration. Yes, Fizan. I have one doubt, sir. Just I want to ask you. Yes, please. Just in first topic, uh, first point was tools to use within a design specification example. Disc speed. So, for example, yeah, grinder if we are, yes, if we are using the grinder, so the RPM of grinder or disc should be same, or the difference yeah. should be. Yeah, if the if the disc RPM are more, if the disc RPMs are more, okay, then it would be safe. Okay, then it would be safe. It means okay. that the, for the example, RPM of for disc example, should be usually the requirement is it should be same okay this is the requirement but in case let's say uh, the rpm of machine is machine and disk rpm of machine is let's say 1000 rpm and machine rpm are 1200 okay it will be working no issues because disk can disk is having 200 rpm as safety factor no issues, okay? But if machine is having 1200, machine is moving at 1200 RPM and you are applying the disc of 1000 RPM, then surely it there would be a breakdown. Okay, because now this disc cannot rotate at 1200 RPM, but machine is rotating it. Okay, so that is why that is going to be a breakdown over there. Clear, Fazan? Yes, actually, just I was, was having confusion at site as well in our current job. So I asked how to ask with you and do the just I want to clear my confusion. Yeah. No problem. No problem. But usually, okay, don't go in this detail. Okay, this is we are discussing. Don't go in this detail because usually we don't allow in this way. The reason is workers they would be using 1000 of rpm disc with 1200 okay and they would when when you will ask them why you are doing it they would tell you that i understood in reverse okay so we because we cannot debate with the workers or laborers so that is why you don't have to tell them this scenario okay but what we have to do if we are having 1000 of rpm for the machine 1000 rpm of the disk is required 
and this is basically the requirement from the manufacturer clear yes sir now clear no okay. thank you sir no problem next is safe storage and handling of fuel for example to operate the power tools if we are having some kind of fuel or driven force for example batteries are there petrol are the petrol is there so we must be having safe storage and proper handling requirements are there we should be storing it safe we should be handling it safe then inspection and testing of electrical equipment we have to inspect and we have to test the electrical equipment for example for all kind of tools we must be checking their cords before we are going to use them before we are going to operate them so these uh, these are the requirements of portable power tool and uh, this is our at the end of our module 9.2 what did we discuss in this module we discussed two different kind of tools their hazards and control one we discussed about hand tools okay their hazards and controls then the next we discussed about portable power tools basically both are handheld tools but one of them is non powered one of them is powered so we discussed about non powered and powered both and uh, here we were discussing about the portable power tool what are those what are the main hazards what are the controls and what are the safe practices okay and afizan as you have mentioned that uh, the other safe practices should be included just like you are going to use it at the correct angle yes those safe practices must be in must be kept in our practice okay yes, so guys uh, right now i guess there is sala time so let's have a break okay and uh, right now it's 627 inshallah see you at uh, 657 and once we will be back we will be discussing our next module next module would be uh, machinery hazard that what are the machinery hazards we are having from machines we will see the mechanical hazard so let's have a break and uh, see you after the break thank you <laughs>